Okay, I've been feeling super moody these last couple days, and I couldn't even tell you why, so I'm just gonna fucking do this hashtag one deck gone wild um, right now, because I know that I'm gonna want to do it later, probably, with some other decks, and I just, like, I don't know, I don't want to get in my own head about it, so basically this tag, I think, is, like, officially run by Meg at Rose Honey Ritual. I don't know. I know that Meg has, like, a a playlist with them, but it's, like, a bunch of different people contributed all these different questions, and the idea is that you answer them about one deck. Um, so, <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. I fucking, like, burned myself trying to make some, uh, like, just broil some tortillas for a little crappy makeshift soft taco thing that I was doing, and I'm kind of, like, irritated about that, <laughs> where it doesn't hurt, but I'm just like, man, that was stupid of me. Like, I literally burned it just trying to sprinkle cheese on them while it was in the oven. Like, I, I, you know, it's, it's the, fuck, they're on the baking sheet, like, in the oven, and then I stick my hand in to sprinkle the cheese on, and then I lifted it too high, and I like, burned this on the top of the oven. It's like, god damn it. Like, like, that was dumb. <laughs> that that was an absolutely avoidable thing that happened. <laughs> okay, so to suit my mood, I'm doing this tag for the Fantastical Tarot by Natalie Hertz, I think. It's like a vintage 1990-whatever deck, 98, 97, 99, whatever. Um, and so I picked this one because I feel like this deck totally is a lot of my inner teenage self and like it's very moody <laughs> I'll just kind of like show it off 99 and in 2004 whatever um like it's just it's just moody and all the people are wearing super heavy eyeshadow and have no pupils and are very pointy and gothic and moody and it's just like yeah this is like the edgy fucking <laughs> feeling that I'm having that I'm having today so I picked out some of the cards all in advance to answer some of the questions so we can just like pop right through this uh the first question I'm going to answer is uh what is my favorite set of minors and for me that's the twos so these are the twos. I should have figured out how I'm going to organize this stupid video camera. Yeah, these are the twos. <laughs> and I feel like they're just the most interesting. And they kind of like, out of all of the sets, these make the best set. Whereas like a lot of the other ones, there's one of the four that is just like, eh, whatever. But these ones, like all of them are good. Um, this one feels a little, like, Christmassy, the Two of Cups here. These are flowers in the background, but they kind of look like snowflakes, and it looks like, oh, you know, a fucking, uh, cover to a Christmas romance Hallmark movie, but, you know, I kind I watch those sometimes. <laughs> I watch those ironically, and then sometimes unironically. Um, I really like this Two of Pentacles because it fucking reminds me of like uh, Joey Ramone or something juggling gold records. Um, and then these leopards are obviously super awesome on the Two of Wands. And, you know, Two of Swords, like, it's solid. That's a cool robe. I like the black and white thingy. I would wear that. So, yeah, this is, this is like the best set of miners. Uh, the next question is my favorite representation of a particular card. Um, and I assume this is sort of like the, you know, favorite majors, 22 faves, favorite court cards, whatever, all those, like, you pick a favorite out of all your decks or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I really like this Temperance card. I think it's really pretty and just feels really queer to me, I guess, because of the, the, like, androgynous figure, but not androgynous in the sense of, like, having no gendered features, but androgynous in having multiple features that we typically associate with different genders. So, like, having the super long flowing hair, and then the heavy makeup feels really queer, and then the strong jawline, and, like, the... the um, there's, a, there's an artist that I totally can't remember um, 
who I'll put up on the screen who does art that looks kind of like this, uh, you know, just in terms of like the figure drawing and then the particular pose and everything feels very Klimt to me. So I really, I really like it. I like how the purple in the background here is very, you know, combination of red and blue, it, you know, feels like the most temperance color. I mean, I suppose you could kind of do that with, with like green being blue and yellow or whatever. Like, why is it that we have decided that red and blue in particular are opposites? Like, why is it that those two have such different feelings or is it that we've just ascribed such opposite meanings to them that we sort of say, oh, well, these have very vastly different feelings, whereas yellow is kind of like, well, you know, yellow shares some properties with blue and some with red. I don't know, but purple, combination of opposites, like, like, whatever. <laughs> the thing with this deck is I don't know that there's any individual images that I go super deep on. But it's just like the whole the whole deck is a mood, and it's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> and I feel like the mood is captured super well in this Temperance card. So that's why this is one of my favorite uh, representations. Um, jumping right ahead to my favorite animal that's represented. You've already seen it, but let's talk about it. The uh, leopards here on the Two of Wands are are just top notch <laughs> fucking uh the black panther and then the the yellow leopard like as a pair here i don't know they look cool and they're wearing eyeliner it's like goth lisa frank <laughs> and even the even the even the leopards are like all lanky and weirdly angular like they've got these weird I don't know, you can see their rib cage and their spine in some ways, and, you know, their legs look like just weird legs. <laughs> They're so cool. I mean, I suppose this is kind of an easy question, because there are not that many animals depicted in the deck. There's this, there's, like, one dog in the, um, eight of... Oh, look at that. It's right here. This is the dog in the Eight of Wands. And this is a pretty good dog. Like, if it wasn't for these leopards, then this dog would definitely be the best animal representation. But the others, I'm pretty sure the only other animals in this deck anyway are the horses for the knights. Which, oh, I guess there's like a unicorn in there. There's a couple of dragon-like carvings, but most of them are just like the the knight horses, which all look weird because they're horses, and horses always look weird. <laughs> So, yeah, leopards, super cool. They're the best ones. Uh, which card reminds, which court card reminds me the most of Heartbreak? Um, this is not a court card. <laughs> I did these out of order. Hang on. The Queen of Cups. Um, this card reminds me of heartbreak. I don't know that any of them super do, but this one just sort of looks like like they have broken hearts and also had their heart broken by the most popular guy in school. Like <laughs> like there's this movie and it's it's not like a great movie. And in fact, I kind of dislike a lot of parts of it, but I just watch it sometimes anyway and it's the one that has uh whatever her name is who played phoebe buffet in it um it was something in something's high school reunion romy someone in romy's high school reunion anyway so it had like like um they were <laughs> it's just like this pair of sort of uh madonna like uh, new romantic valley girls who were trying to seem successful at their high school reunion. And I don't know, it just kind of reminded me of that where it's like there was this one geek who was, who liked her and she didn't like him. And then of course she liked someone who didn't like her. And it was just, you know, a lot of high school drama bullshit. And this just seems like somebody who's gone through that and also likes Madonna. <laughs> so, so Yeah. That's heartbreak, I guess. <laughs> it's close enough. Which card um, 
constantly follows me slash uh, appears from this deck. For whatever reason, it is always this Four of Wands. I have not been able to to like let go of this Four of Wands. It's just always, always there, always around, always popping up. And I guess it's like... I think it's really funny because the, the Four of Wands is usually such a celebratory card, and then this is just like a very... A very, like, gloomy-looking unicorn, as far as unicorns go. Like, it's... Uh, I guess you could say, yeah, there's these wands in the ground, there's flowers and things, but it's not like, woo, yeah, party! It's just like this unicorn being like, yeah, whatever. Like, it's fine, I guess. <laughs> um, Coming from this deck, though, I think that it kind of means a lot, because it's, it's just kind of saying, like, you know... Things aren't that bad. Like, you don't need to be so... Like, like I feel like the unicorn in this. I, I feel like a very moody being with the deck just being like, you know... Like, it's alright. Like a pat on the back or something. But not in a way that's like, Oh, well, you just need to smile and celebrate and everything will be fine. It's just like, you know... Celebratory in a goth way. I don't know what that means. Someone going up and like, you know, it's like the goth best friend sitting next to you and being like, hey, and you're like, what's up? And they're like, nothing. And you just kind of sit there. That's what this feels like. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, for the ones that don't have to do with a particular card, I'll just sort of flip through some more of the cards here. Um, Next question is, uh, if you made this deck a meal, what would it be? Uh, I feel like it would be some sort of, like, crock pot, beefy green stew with, like, kale and big chunks of beef that have been, you know, boiling for too long and they end up a little bit chewy. And so it's, like, one of those stews that always gets hyped up as like, oh yeah, really good home cooking. It's so good. It's so good for you. But it just doesn't really taste that good because all the ingredients get too limp. And it's like, it reminds you of your mom's cooking if your mom is just a very mediocre cook. <laughs> That's what this deck is as a meal. Like, <laughs> like, Somewhat nourishing, I guess, but ultimately unimpressive, and you could probably do a lot more tastier things with the individual ingredients. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now we're up to this one. Uh, what is this deck's favorite book? And um, I think that this deck's favorite book is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And part of that is totally projection because that was my favorite book when I was a teenager. And um, this deck reminds me a lot of when I was a teenager. And so therefore we, would, we must have the same favorite book. But it's sort of like this this irreverence and like it's it's moody in the sense of like nothing really means every no, nothing means anything nothing makes sense it it feels like a very teenage book where it's like sort of laughing at science fiction in a way <laughs> it's 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 laughing at everything and just being like yeah <laughs> everything's ridiculous um and this this card just like represents it i think pretty pretty well this looks like it could easily be one of the original covers for the Hitchhiker's Guide, so we're going with that one. Um, yeah. Next question. If you were to travel anywhere, where would you take this deck? Um, I feel like this deck reminds me a lot of Iceland. I guess just in the colors or scenery, and of course I, I say that and I land on a fucking desert card, but... I don't know. It feels Icelandic. I couldn't tell you why. I And failing Iceland, I have a friend who was born in Iceland who kind of has the look of a lot of these characters, like has the very strong cheekbones and the, and the, the, the like strong 
the, the this very particular bone structure. So I guess I'd just like go to visit her with this deck, and that's what I would do. <laughs> now, where does this deck want to go? I think that it wants to be tropical in some ways. Like, if we come back and look at the Four of Wands, there's a few cards here, and not even just the Four of Wands. Where's the, uh, where's the Leopard card? Where's the Leopard card? Like, there's a few cards that just feel like they are trying to be really tropical, or they want to be tropical, or visit a tropical place, and it's just not... Like, I'm sorry, deck, you're not tropical. You need to just, you need to do, you're, you're icy Viking, Icelandic, like, moody, everybody's wearing big jackets and robes and stuff. <laughs> you are not a tropical deck, but I feel like it would want to be, it would want to visit somewhere tropical, you know? Um... Something I would change about the deck is definitely fewer white people. Like, it is pretty much all white people, and the two people of color in this deck are, like, these really weird depictions that I'm a little, like, we they're just, they're just a little weird. Like, these are the two people of color, which is the Strength card and the Sun card, and uh, they're just kind of, like, weird representations where I feel like, you know, it's not that they are inherently racist or anything, but, like, it's weird when these are the only two depictions, right? Um, I guess it has something to do with the setting of the deck is supposed to be somewhat of, like, a particular era, but, you know, it feels like it... it, it could very easily sway into, like, this, um, dismissive, uh, idea of, of black culture and of, and specifically of, like, African structures and things. Like, like, have you ever seen those things where, um, people are pointing out that, you know, the, the white or European idea of what Africa looks like is very, very different than what it actually looks like. And you see pictures of, you know, any modern city in Africa, <laughs> and like whatever, Nairobi or, um, you, you know, it has like these depictions of these very modern cities and they look like any other city and people are like, whoa, that's in Africa. I don't know. That's just like a whole, I guess it's a meme of like making fun of, uh, this, like, very racist, dismissive, kind of looking down on the the poor tribal people's attitude, like, and I, I, it's just like one of those things where I can't tell if this deck has that, or if it's a coincidence, or just, like, a poorly planned out setting, I don't know, like, that's definitely... <laughs> I would definitely want to change that. I would definitely want to have, like, more people of color throughout the deck in a more, um, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> well, we're, we're moving on. Um, what card would I want to hang in blank room of the house? Um... This particular card of the Five of Cups, I feel like I could totally hang in my closet or, like, in the bedroom near my closet. This just feels like sort of a dressing room or backstage kind of thing. I don't know. Does this figure remind anyone else of Ophelia? Um, I don't know. Like, it's a, it seems like the sort of thing that you could tuck into your dressing room mirror, the the one that has all those lights on the on the edges, like one of those super burlesque dressing room mirror kind of things. <laughs> Alright, what is this deck's biggest fear? Um, this deck's biggest fear would be, like, being forced to do something in public that they don't want to do. And I have this very particular image of, like, your parents made you 
you're you're usually you know very self expressive and whatever, and your parents made you dress up in a super boring polo shirt and khakis to take a family photo, which you didn't want to be in in the first place, or like you know your teacher forces you to perform at the school talent show, and basically it's like being forced to do something that's not necessarily inherently humiliating, but it's humiliating to you because it's so antithetical to who you are and how you prefer to express yourself that it's embarrassing. That's what this, that is this deck's biggest fear. And that was definitely a fear of mine. Like I had a couple times where I was, I don't know if forced is exactly the right word, but certainly like strongly pressured to participate in like a talent show or something that I did not want to. Um, and that sucks. <laughs> so yeah, definitely a, a relatable fear. Um, if this deck had its own collection, what would it collect? And I feel like it would try to collect something that is like kind of edgy, but they probably think it's more edgy than it actually is. So I'm picturing like doll heads or something where they're, they're sort of half of the fun in it for them is to do it for the shock value, but it's really not especially shocking. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or like, um, no, yeah, yeah, I think that, I think doll heads is like the best thing. All right. Um, so I've got a couple others to just kind of set out here because I want to use them in the, uh, uh, like follow-up questions and I don't want to have to search for them later. So we won't use those, but I'm going to shuffle the rest of these for uh, the next question, which is draw three random cards to do fuck, Mary kill, which is also labeled as bed, wed, behead. And I have never heard that way of just of, of saying it before. Which I think, I think it's hilarious. Bed, wed, behead. It sounds like bed, bath and beyond. I can't, can't handle it. Anyway, so we're going to do three random cards for Fuck, Mary Kill. This deck has such a good shuffle. And it might just be this particular copy, which I'll get to in a second here. Alright, that's like good enough. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, um, there's, like, people in, like, every single one of these, but of course I pull the two that have not people. So what am I supposed to do? I'm gonna say, like, yeah, I'm gonna go fuck that house. I'm gonna fuck the these deer. Like, I feel like it's kind of pigeonholing me here, so I guess I'll just go ahead and fuck this, this dude with the dog. I guess they'd be pretty cool. Like, anyone with a dog, they'd be cool. Um, I will, uh, go ahead and marry the deer here. That seems like it could be the beginning of some sort of fairy tale of like marrying a deer. And if not, it's like, you know, whatever. <laughs> what, like, <laughs> probably won't get in that many fights or anything. <laughs> like, like I'd, I'd marry a deer. We we could have a good life out in the forest together. <laughs> it's the Ten of Cups. Like, I gotta marry the Ten of Cups, right? That's like the marriage card, or that of the Four of Wands. So, like, okay, guess I'll marry the, these deer. We'll have, we'll have, like, a big uh, deer herd polycule. Um, and then I will behead this uh, this empty fucking field. I'll go and behead, like, the lord of this manor who is trying to encroach upon... Um, my, my spouse's, uh, forest home. Like, that's what we'll do. We'll just pretend that this is, like, a logger or something, and we'll go and behead them. It's some, like, lord who's trying to take ownership of the commons. <laughs> great. Perfect. Fucking great. Okay. Um, what is this deck's signature fate or favorite scent or flavor. Like, I probably wouldn't have answered this one except that I got this deck used on eBay and whoever had it before definitely seemed to either just use perfume a lot or, like, 
specifically soaked this deck in some sort of perfume, because you can, you can really, <laughs> why did I do that, stick that straight up into my nose? Um, you can definitely kind of tell, um, you know, even as you're using it, you get a little bit of the scents coming out. I'm super bad at describing scents. It definitely smells kind of, it smells kind of perfumey, but like, I don't know, like sandalwood-ish? Like, I don't know. It smells like the sort of smell that you'd have at a metaphysical shop. Like, just go into any metaphysical shop and smell whatever incense they're, they're like, burning 24-7 that's leaking out into the sidewalk, and that's probably what this smells like. You could probably picture it pretty well. Um, how old does the deck believe it is? All I could think of for this one was this quote from King of the Hill where David Cross is playing some guy who's like this big, this big, like, new age dork, and he says, How old are you? 30? 40? Uh, not even close. I am 5,000. Uh, that's, that's what this deck is. It thinks that it's super old and wise and whatever, and it's totally not. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we have another one to pull from the tiny pre-prepared stack. Uh, which card in the deck do you feel most represents you right now? That is not the right one. This is the right one. <laughs> the Four of Cups. Yeah, just definitely kind of moody. I've got a lot of things going on that I am excited about, and I'm excited about them in theory and they're, and whatever, but I'm just like, I'm just feeling moody about everything. And this one in, in particular, like this figure feels very, not dismissive, not just, not tired, not just like, oh, you know, I just, I can't possibly handle one more thing. It's just they're looking at all this and they're like, they're just they're just moody. They're just angry and goth for no reason. They're just like, you know, like this is all this is all stupid. And it's like they don't actually think that. They just are feeling like they feel like they hate everything. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm feeling right now. I just kind of hate everything. <laughs> and it, it's like I hate everything in like a satisfying way where I am Okay, I wasn't very satisfied before I made this video, but now I'm feeling like, okay, man, maybe I'm kind of enjoying hating everything right now. <laughs> Just feeling kind of bitchy, I guess is the word. Uh, yeah. What card in the stick do you feel gives you a unique spin on your regular opinion of that card? And for that, I have the Three of Cups here. Uh, and I think this is a unique spin because the Three of Cups is usually like a whole bunch of people celebrating together, and this one instead has someone very, you know, taking some well-deserved me time, hanging out in the hills by themselves and playing some music, and they are clearly still enjoying themselves. Like, this is probably one of the, I don't know, two cards that actually has someone smiling, <laughs> so they're clearly very much enjoying themselves. Um... But it's definitely, like, it's not social in the way that other Three of Cups cards are. And it's like, that's fine. Like, sometimes social is... Sometimes social just turns into too much conflict or too much overwhelm. Or sometimes you're just, like, you just hate everybody and you want some alone time. And that's, you know, just as fulfilling and celebratory and, like, unifying, I guess as the as as the three of cups normally is um you're like unifying your whole self i don't know whatever yeah this one definitely is a unique spin on the on the regular opinion or interpretation of the three of cups um the outlier card i kept the the world in there because this is definitely the outlier as you can probably tell by now <laughs> like it just has a very different um look. <laughs> it looks almost like it was done by an entirely different, entirely different artist or an, it's like, you know, this is, this is like, you know, sci-fi book cover. And these are like, uh, I don't know, goth teenager notebook doodles. 
<laughs> so very, very different. Definitely the the outlier card. Um, and what is this deck's favorite spread? I don't know if the deck likes this spread in particular, but the one that I like to use with this a lot is Lisa Pepez's Inner Child spread. Um, I can't remember all the positions right now, but it's basically like, um, what does your inner child want and what do they actually need? And then there's like three other cards. I'll just link the video where Lisa described it because it's a pretty darn good spread and I use it a bunch and I use it a bunch with this deck in particular. All right. So that was rather quick and dirty as far as my responses to these things typically go. Uh, it did make me feel a little better, even though my uh, legs are falling asleep now. <laughs> um, happy to show off the fantastical tarot, you know, flaws and all, all flaw, flaw, flaws of flaws of all, flaws and all, I guess. <laughs> I'll probably do this again with another deck. I like these questions. I like many of these questions. Some of them I don't like, but whatever. That's why we are given the freedom to not do all the questions. Talk to you guys later. Bye.